You are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back, or for the first time, to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Uh, I'm your host. I had to think about that for a minute. Uh, Lance White. Tonight, my guest is Jean Houdon. I hope I got the last name right. It's French. Uh, Jean will be with us momentarily, and he can correct me if he likes. (laughs) Jean is best known for having co-founded the Earth Rainbow Network in February of 1997. Over time, this network evolved, and its focus shifted towards sharing information, visions, and feedbacks on a broad range of subjects as a way to expand and deepen global awareness and the sense of forming a global spiritual community, gradually empowering itself to contribute in shaping the future of this world. He also co-created the Global Meditation Focus Group in April 2000 to regularly issue meditation focuses designed to focalize the attention and healing energies of a growing number of meditators around the world onto situations and crises in need of peaceful resolution and spiritual assistance. In 1986, he was inspired to write a book called The Immortal Child, whose purpose was to present to a vast audience the concept of our planet as one single global entity, also known as the Gaia Hypothesis. This book, published in English, French, Japanese, and Portuguese, led to two years of intense work to promote the idea of an Earth concert, which finally took place on December 31, 1989, through 20 concerts held in 15 different countries. So, there are many more accomplishments that uh, Jean has made, so let's continue to discover more about him now. Hi, Jean, how are you? Hi, Lance, I'm very well. I'm very happy to be on your show, Ryan. Thank you very much for inviting me. (laughs) Well, it's my pleasure. I have been following and reading your uh, compilations for some time now. I can't remember when I first subscribed. But uh, they are absolutely, uh, I can't believe you put so much work and effort and wonderful information in them. And, and of course, I, we might as well mention now they're, they're free to subscribe to. And um, I believe that uh, to do that, you just go to your site at earthrainbownetwork.com. That's correct. And people can see uh, the instruction how to subscribe from there. These are these are really wonderful because they <laughs> it covers the whole range of uh, subjects from the the lightest of the love to the darkest of the dark. Um, what triggered your nurturing of humanity and our planet into in, in this way, and how far back does that go? <laughs> That's an interesting question to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> Before well. you were born, probably. <laughs> Well, it it should be so, uh, because I've had a quite a ex- interesting experience this lifetime. Uh, I'd say the uh, drive to um, uh, sort of offer myself as an instrument to help uh, change things for the better in this on, in this world started when I was pretty young. Um, when I uh, was eighteen, I. Um, Someone uh, mentioned to me uh, the word Rosicrucian, oh. and uh, I was immediately very keenly interested about what that was, and uh, eventually I became a member of that esoteric organization. That was my uh, doorway into uh, the, world, the world of esoteric teaching and uh, spiritual understanding, and most importantly, um, inner experiences into who I am and uh, with what I'm connected to uh, through meditations and uh, all kind of uh, very powerful experiences I ha- I've had uh, over time. So eventually, uh, what you, you, you read The Immortal Child, 
and you saw what the character in, in, in that book goes through and that's uh, a little bit romanticized that's uh, about what I've been through when I was uh, younger mm-hmm. uh, I really discovered that uh, we are all one with all life on earth not just on an, an intellectual level but really I felt it uh, uh, very deeply uh, in my whole being and once you get that kind of connection and once afterwards you discover that the web of light is being uh, dismantled, destroyed uh, disregarded by uh, how humanity behaves mm-hmm. um, then you, you feel a direct responsibility to do something about it and another experience that I had later on, uh, while I was in Los Angeles, I, I was being guided in a meditation by a shaman uh, who had placed some uh, crystals on my chakras. And he, his meditation was to bring me, uh, bring my awareness into the very center of our planet. Uh, and at some point, I really felt that I was there, that, that I was sensing this whole being, this whole very motherly being. And at, at one point, I heard very clearly. And, I, you know, I'm a kind of guy who all want, always wants to do something. I'm always pushed from within to do all kinds of things to, uh, to, to help. And at that point, I heard very clearly, there's nothing to do but to be. Oh. You just have to be. <laughs> and that's all there is to do. <laughs> so from that point on, my tack changing, I, I, I realized that uh, it, it was easier to, instead of pushing, just to go with the flow and uh, go wherever it, it leads me to. Boy, that, that is a major life lesson that many people don't get in, in many lifetimes. And I'm telling you, if we can just learn that one tiny piece that really is the secret to life in, in many ways. Yes. Um, and also in the a universe, uh, if if we are just being, the universe seems to unfold or uh, unravel a magic carpet that shows us in clear ways what's next for us. And usually it's a surprise for me. Um, sometimes it's not a surprise, but... Uh, you know, when we just let go of our expectations, it's amazing how life just kind of begins to flow more like a river and uh, not like going over a cliff with a or a barrel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, when you uh, understand the magic of synchronicities, and many, many, many people in the new consciousness movement have got that now, mm. uh, there's so much that opens up to us because we just... Um, we just listen to what what is in front of us, what is within us, and uh, pick our cues from there. Mm-hmm. And, and and just you know we're guided all the time if we just want to listen to it. Mm-hmm. So that's all there is to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you've been doing uh, this the uh, Earth Rainbow Network now for about thirteen years. Mm-hmm. Um, I have several uh, different things I want to ask you about that. What are some of the accomplishments that you're most proud of? Uh, well, I, I rarely think in those terms. Oh, because I know. I know. When, I when you're proud of something is, is when you think you've achieved something. But I've yeah. First... But, uh, <laughs> let, me, but, let me rephrase that. Maybe Okay. <laughs> I'm complicating your life. Sorry. <laughs> no, this is okay because this is a process for me too, and I need to be aware of how I phrase things. And and you're so right about that. Um, I think what I'm trying to say is, what seemed to bring the most satisfaction to you in terms of its impact, its positive impact globally. Uh, this is not something which is easy to uh, circumscribe because uh, it's a very um, intangible thing that yeah. uh, that you know you network all kinds of information. You rarely get feedbacks from people yeah. uh, on specific items. Of course, I do get uh, very interesting, supportive uh, words of appreciation from time to time from readers uh, and subscribers, and that's always uh, interesting to 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 see. But uh, my sense is that. 
beyond the flow of information we all share, which create a common awareness mm -hmm. about things, uh, there's uh, this inner uh, sense of forming, uh, as you just said at the beginning of the show, uh, a global community uh, uh, empowering itself to change the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think all those who uh, regularly uh, connect with this information that have been uh, being led to network have the sense that they are like members of a big orchestra and they are played a part in it and they know that everybody is playing their part and that overall it, it does something very good. Mm -hmm. And that's all I need to feel, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know what you're saying. I, I feel the same way about the radio show. Uh, sometimes, you know, I don't get uh, a great deal of feedback uh, from people and Uh, so I just go on doing it because I like doing it and it's fun mm -hmm. to do and I get to talk to wonderful people like yourself. So, you know, but I, I look at that as kind of a way of serving the planet in getting information out and sharing, sharing, uh, information that I think, I think might be of value to others. Yeah. Um, Actually, what we're doing, which is very important, is that we are writing a new story for this planet to all together. All the uh, thousands and thousands of people who are following their own inner guidance and uh, putting their passion into manifesting whatever it is they, they, they came to do in this lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we have the mainstream media and, and the old storyline that still goes on, but we have really, in, in the past uh, 10, 15 years, started getting some traction in terms of influencing the rest of this planet with the new storyline we're writing, which is not our own uh, authorship, of course. We're just uh, here as instrument in, into some higher plans that is, is being manifested through our uh, willing participation. Right, right. Do you see this as kind of a, I mean, I've started to see it this way and uh, it's hard not to see it this way once you kind of shift your thinking about it but uh, do you see this as kind of uh, the end of an old paradigm or an age and the, the birthing of something new? Yes, it definitely is uh, something like that. It's a very uh, cross-fading thing, though. It, it's not going to happen overnight uh, in the twinkling of an eye. It's happening very gradually while the old uh, the old world dies down into its, its own paradoxical uh, stupidity uh, <laughs> a new one is is rising slowly trying to uh, feel out its way uh through all kinds of experience and uh, and um, you know it, nothing is fixed nothing is set but there's an overall trend which is uh, definitely there towards something new happening. Uh, I don't want to know exactly, and I want to try to think what it's going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. As I did when I wrote The Immortal Child, when mm -hmm. I, I got started with that, uh, it was after uh, doing a meditation and connecting with Gaia uh, as, as a whole being, uh, just after I read the last uh, book of this um, uh, series by uh, Isaac Ivanov about... Um, Uh, the planet being uh, an alive being, and I, I got a, a you know a few inklings of what the content of the book would be by the, the title of, of the seven chapters, a, a short paragraph. But beyond that, I had no idea what the storyline would be for that book. So I really str uh, have striven throughout the whole process of writing the book to be a blank page to have to not try to imagine what the next. Uh, elements of the book would be and, and so I read the book as I wrote it and for me the story of this planet is exactly the same I, I, I don't want to try to push ahead and figure out what it's going to happen I, I know it's going to be wonderful and uh, I trust there's a guiding hand <laughs> that is uh, bringing us right where we're supposed to go well yes Yes, uh, let's hope so because uh, if there is, uh, if there isn't, we're in big trouble, and we're in big trouble anyway. So, I do believe that you're right about the guiding hand. Um, when during the last decade, you've written a lot uh, in your compilations. You include so many wonderful things uh, and the things that are somewhat disturbing in nature and that's part of what's going on 
Um, what do you see as some of the more pressing issues?